My name is Joe Peroni and this is the Rise Above Project. And for today's show, I wanted to find an interesting way to talk about the issue of codependence. So I decided that I would do a song analysis of the best song that I found that actually describes codependence. So let's give credit where it's due. This song is a song called Bargain. That's the one I'm gonna to analyze today. It's by a band called The Who. It's from the album Who's Next. Uh, Who's Next, the album, is generally regarded as being one of the greatest classic rock albums of all time. Uh, in some polls you'll see it's number one, others it may drop down to number five. Be that as it may, it's one of the greatest of all time. And it was written by a man, uh, Peter Townsend. And here is a picture of him right there. You can see him there. Now to be fair, about this right up front. According to Peter Townsend, and he's the writer of it, he wrote this song called Bargain, and this song is about losing everything, including your ego. And you do this to be one with God. And that's how he saw it. And so we have to be cognizant of that. But if you read through the lyrics, it very much is a song about codependence. And most people who have bought this album and have been listening to this song on classic rock radio since 1971, they didn't know it was a spiritual song. They assumed that it was a fairly masculine, so to speak, love song. And so that's why I want to do this, because most men thought it was about giving up everything to win and to earn the love of a woman because they have this need to be the white knight, to be the hero, to be Superman, uh, you name it. And so that's why I thought I can really describe this and hopefully uh, really make people understand what codependence is, even in a song like this, where people don't see it as codependent, they see it as a love song. So in order to understand the difference here, in what codependence traits are compared to what's in the song. I did this last week a little bit. I gave you a bunch of the traits of codependence, but let's go over that really quick. So just in case you didn't hear last week's show that this show will make sense to you. So number one, traits of a codependent, being overly responsible for keeping the relationship together, breaking your own boundaries or not having any boundaries, denying your own emotions, denying your own feelings and needs, in order to maintain the relationship, basically at all costs. So you can say that a codependent is a relationship addict and that the relationship is more important than the partner's or each partner's personal happiness. So with that in mind, let's start to take a look at the lyrics of this song. So what I'm gonna do is, there's so much here, I'm gonna read one verse and then I'll analyze it and then I'll move on. First verse, I gladly lose me to find you. I gladly give up all I had. To find you, I'd suffer anything and be glad. So that's the first verse, you got three lines there. And you could write a ton of psychology books just based on that alone. So I'm gonna to try to do this uh, short and sweet because I could be here all day talking about this, but let's take the first line. I gladly lose me to find you. First of all, you should, in a competent, a good relationship, a happy relationship, one that's not filled with dysfunction, you should never lose yourself in that relationship. And it could also be said that if you lose yourself in a relationship, that it's possible that you never had a strong sense of self to begin with. And if that's true, you probably shouldn't take on a relationship until you have a stronger relationship with yourself. So that's the first part. I'll gladly lose me to find you. That should never happen. Line two, I, I would gladly give up all I had. Let's take a look at that. In a good functioning relationship, why would a partner ever be okay with you giving up everything that you had in order to make a relationship work. So that alone would tell you that you're doing way too much to hold a relationship together and you're probably with the wrong person if they're okay with you giving up everything. They should not ask that. And if they didn't ask and you're doing it, they should want you to get back to following your dreams and your desires. Line three, 
To find you, I'd suffer anything and be glad. And here you go, classic codependence. Because this line right here is actually somebody denying their emotions, they're denying their needs. And they would be glad that the relationship is intact, although they're suffering. So again, codependence, this is not what you would call a good love song, although a lot of people see it as that. And the common theme through the song, which you'll see is a person, they have a choice, all right? They can be alone, they could leave the relationship, they could never start a relationship. Basically they're alone, or they could be in a relationship and suffer in it. But this person chooses to suffer rather than to be alone because the suffering in the relationship technically would be less than the suffering that they would have if they're alone. So the chorus after all that. Well, let's keep going with, with another verse. I'll get to the chorus in a second. I pay any price just to get you and I'd work all my life and I will. To win you, I'd stand naked, stoned, and stabbed. Again, only three lines, but an amazing amount of material here. So let's take it from the top. I pay any price just to get you. First of all, you should never be giving up too much in a relationship. And if you're doing that, again, the love that you're getting is probably conditional, not unconditional. So true love would be unconditional. So if you need to do a bunch of things in order to hold a relationship together, including doing things that are destructive to yourself, it's no way to have a relationship. Second line of this verse, I'd work all my life and I will. The term work we could use in a few different ways here. There are people that will work financially, let's say, to impress their partner thinking that if they don't make enough money, their partner will leave them. And it's okay, of course, to want to be successful. But if you're doing that because you're afraid that your partner's going to leave, or because every time you go to work or something happens or you don't make enough money that your partner's going to leave, you're with the wrong person, right? That's a person who probably doesn't care about you very much. And again, I live in Las Vegas, so I see this all the time. You know, as people get older, things happen, right? Like, that's just normal. I know a lot of people in Las Vegas, they're afraid to gain one pound. They're afraid to have one gray hair. They're afraid to have one wrinkle. So they spend a lot of time and money doing things to look like they're 25 years old when they might be 45, 55, 65 years old. And I don't see anything wrong with going to the gym and eating right all the time to be your best self. And even all the whole things with the cosmetic surgery and Botox and getting your hair done. Heck, I get my hair done too. But the thing is though, you need to really be doing it for yourself. You know, if you're doing that every day with the thought that you are not good enough and you're just not worth it unless you look a certain way or you're scared to death of your partner seeing you a certain way and they may reject you. Again, this is codependence because you're doing everything to make your partner happy. And especially these things that are just very natural, like, like aging. Let's talk about it from another psychological part that uh, a lot of people quote unquote work for. You should be able to have normal, authentic conversations with your partner. If you have to work really hard about saying the exact right things and always being afraid, in other words, walking on eggshells because your partner might get angry, so you're trying to manage your partner's emotions all the time because you don't know if they're going to try to hurt you in some way or they're gonna put you down in some way. Or in some cases I've seen, some people are not even walking on eggshells, they're walking on landmines. I and mean, that's how emotionally reactive their partners can be. And if you're living like this and you're trying to hold the partnership together, but you're actually shape-shifting and trying to change almost every word that comes out of your mouth, this isn't something that should be looked up to. And again, in this song, people think, wow, this is awesome. This is a great love song. It, it's actually ab abusive. And it gets worse. By the way, when I say worse, I mean the, the lyrics in terms of somebody following this, 
The Who's My Favorite Band, and this is a great song. So if you want to go on YouTube later to listen to the song, you'll hear great acoustic guitar, electric guitar, drums. You'll hear all that. It's a, it's a great song. It's just that the words are disturbing when people hear it and they interpret it as a love song. Here's the next part. To win you, I'd stand naked, stoned, and stabbed. Let's take a look, because Peter Townsend's a genius at writing, and he picks his words very carefully. Let's take a look at the word naked. There's a difference, right? So if you do boudoir pictures for your romantic partner, those would be called nudes, right? Because you're proud, you're happy, you're doing it to elicit a, a response from your partner, right? There's a pride in that. When we talk about the word naked, it's chosen very carefully for a reason. Because if you're naked, in front of somebody. It doesn't mean you're vulnerable in a good way. It means that you're probably scared to death. It means that there's really no intimacy there. You're probably being hurt or exploited in some way. So again, I'd stand naked. The next two words, I would stand naked, stoned, and stabbed. So we can take this literally, I guess, we could also take it figuratively. So when we talk about stoning somebody, we talk about ancient, say, patriarchy, where if somebody doesn't do what the man wants, you stone them to death, right? We can look at it in, the, in a um, more up-to-date way. You know, what is being thrown at you? I mean, it's possible that you have a dish thrown at you. I understand that. And that does happen, and that should not happen. But let's take a look at some other things that are thrown at you. Put-downs, insults. Why is this okay? And why would somebody be okay with wanting to absorb that in order to hold a relationship together? Nobody should want that. And the word stabbed. Again, uh, many, many people absorb a lot of physical abuse and punishment from a partner, and they're afraid to leave. And a lot of times people would say that, why don't you just leave? It seems easy. But if you have a certain amount of childhood trauma and you have a thought process in your head that holding a relationship is the most important thing or that a divorce is a sin, you know, you, you might be putting up with some physical abuse. And according to the song, like he says, to win you, I'd stand naked, stoned, and stabbed. Nobody should do that. This is, this is not a romantic love song at all. Now we have the chorus. I call that a bargain, the best I ever had. Think about this. So in order to take all that suffering and abuse, this person would still call it a bargain, the best he ever had. Why? Because back to the original theme. Because people who are codependent would rather suffer. They would rather be naked, stoned, stabbed, uh, pay any price, they give up good things for bad in order to have the relationship together. Because the worst thing that they think of is, oh no, I'm alone. Let's continue. I would gladly lose me to find you. I'd gladly give up all I got, which we went over that line already. The next line, to catch you, I'm gonna run and I'll never stop. Think about this for a second. If the relationship was healthy, why would you have to chase your partner all the time? It should be something that's mutual, right? Reciprocal. So again, part of being a codependent is doing too much work to hold a relationship together, being overly responsible for the, re for the relationship. And again, you shouldn't have to be chasing down your partner all the time. So again, in terms of a healthy relationship, this line is not conducive to a good relationship or it shouldn't be in a love song, actually. Next verse. I would pay any price just to win you. I'd surrender my good life for bad. And to find you, I'm going to drown an unsung man. Again, a massive amount of psychology in just three lines. Uh, the term, I pay any price just to win you. First of all, other people are not possessions, 
right? You shouldn't be trying to win anything. You're not getting a little stuffed animal at the fair. That's not what another human being is. It's not a game to try to win somebody. And let's not forget this, that you are also a prize yourself. Again, it should be reciprocal. You're not trying to win something. The relationship together should be a win-win for both partners. The next line might be one of the most disturbing lines of the whole song because he says, to find you, I'm going to drown an unsung man. To be clear, the term unsung means a person who's not celebrated or appreciated for what they do. So who is he talking about when he says, I'm going to drown the unsung man? Well, the way I read it is, is number one, he, he's okay with giving up his dreams. And by the way, when I use the pronoun he, I'm saying because Peter Townsend's a man and he wrote it. I'm not trying to be sexist. I don't want to keep going back and forth between pronouns. It gets too confusing. But yes, this is a person, a man, giving up on his dreams. That's number one. And if we go along with that, he's not being praised or he's not being thought of well for all the good things that he does. It's actually, in a sense, because he's talking about drowning himself here. This is a suicidal tendency here because he's willing to kill a part of himself and be done with it in order to hold a relationship together to make his partner happy. And that's, it's beyond sad. Let's take the next part here. When he's talking about drowning an unsung man, we call it, Karen Hornet called this using the devil's tools. Because he's in a relationship and he's not being appreciated and he knows that that's wrong, he turns around and doesn't appreciate himself. And what he does is he just ends the dream. So he's actually abusive to himself. So here we have some self-abuse. He's turning it on himself in order to keep the relationship going. And then it goes to the chorus again. Uh, I call that a bargain, the best I ever had. Next verse, one of the most interesting verses in this song. I sit looking around. I look at my face in the mirror. I know I'm worth nothing without you. In life, one and one don't make two. One and one make one. And I'm looking for that free ride to me. I'm looking for you. Now, this section right here is a very introspective part of the song where people see it as one of the most loving parts of the song. And this is why it's so disturbing and why Peter Townsend is such an amazing writer because there's nothing really about this that makes it a love song. I mean, maybe to a God, if you're saying that, if you want to be one with God, that, that's different. But if you want to use it as a love song with another human being, this is extremely disturbing. So let's take a look at this here. I know I'm worth nothing without you. Here we have a person with no self-esteem who's a relationship addict, who's trying to increase their self-esteem by the approval of a, another person. So again, we're looking for external validation, and they don't feel worthy unless, unless they have that person. Thus, I know I'm worth nothing without you, because that should not be true for any of us. Next line. In life, one and one don't make two. One and one make one. Again, this person who is showing signs of codependence they're not seeing that two people can be independent and have their own thoughts, feelings, dreams, goals, perceptions in life. They're saying in order to be in a relationship, you have to be totally enmeshed with the other human being and take on their traits. And you have to be almost exactly the same. So one and one doesn't equal two. It's two people sharing everything together to where they're only one viable person. Next line, and I'm looking for that free ride to me. Very interesting line, because here what it is is the free ride. 
right? So if you want to find your own self-esteem, that's an inside job. You have to do that for yourself, thus the word self. But the free ride to your self-esteem is when you look at somebody else and you ask them in a sense, am I good? And if you think I'm good, then I am. And that's the free ride because it doesn't take any work to do that on yourself. Actually, none at all. So that's why it's the free ride and that's why it's a very superficial way in order to gain happiness or self-esteem in this world is to look outside yourself and take a look and scan and be in a partnership with somebody and just Beg them to love you back, to make you real. The other part of that, finding self-esteem. A lot of people do this in the helping business where they say, okay, I'm going to find my self-esteem by helping others and looking at other people. You know, again, you see this with a lot of teachers, doctors, uh, nurses, trainers, <laughs> therapists. You, know, you see this all the time. So again, it's the free ride to you being somebody in this world because you're not looking at yourself. You're not really trying to experience your own feelings and emotions or maybe thoughts of shame and guilt and different things in yourself that you don't like. You're going to override that by looking at somebody else and going, okay, I did this for them. I did a good deed. So that makes me feel good because I made them feel good. So that's why the line says here, I'm looking for that free ride to me. I'm looking for you. Again, you can't get self-esteem outside yourself. It has to be internal validation. So as you see over and over again, I don't want this show to be too long here, but the theme here in codependence and in this song, if you see it as a love song, is that being in a relationship where you're hurting, where you're giving up everything, where you're suffering, is actually suffering less than if you're being alone. And I think obviously no one should aspire to that, okay? That, that's a definite problem. I do understand people who do stand by people in their life though. And there's a middle ground here. I don't think you should run out the door the first second there's a problem either, but I think that there's a level at which you have to be honest with yourself. And are you giving up too much of yourself? Are you experiencing too much pain? Another question I would ask is, is your partner malicious? Are you trying to make something work when your partner is absolutely going out of their way to hurt you? Because then that doesn't make any sense to keep that situation going either. So again, not to tell you what to think, you're gonna take the information and do it with what you will. But let me leave you with this, a quick word for those people who do want to go the extra mile in their relationship. I'm okay with that as long as you're not getting hurt. But let me give you just two little thoughts to think of. Number one, I think it's okay to, to take a bullet, so to speak, for your partner. But it's not okay to take a bullet from your partner. Then, then you gotta get out. And number two, I think it's okay to be a sounding board, obviously, for your partner. Sounding board, yes. But you should never be the target and you should never be their dartboard. It's abusive. So I hope you found today's show interesting and uh, valuable to you. I'm Joe Peroni, and this is the Rise Above Project. Please subscribe and help me out. Tell a friend. Thank you.